Hello everyone and welcome back to another week. Today is Monday. If you watched the last vlog, we're basically following on from that. So you would have left me at the point where I was deliberating over paint in the bedroom. So I've had a sleep on it and I have just decided that I've wasted too many hours of my life thinking about paint, like paint. So I am biting the bullet and I've decided to just use the big five litre tub of the Valspar colour match for Cornforth White because we already had the big five litre tub. We weren't actually aware that you could get a sample pot when we went and got that paint. So to avoid wasting paint and just because I'm so indecisive, I'm just gonna go for that. So today's task is, hi B. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> um, today's task is to paint the bedroom, hopefully to do two coats. And I think we might also, as you can see, the kitchen is looking a bit of a state at the moment. I think we might also have the workmen coming to start Oh, someone wants to sit on my lap to start on the basement today but we haven't had that confirmed yet so I'm not entirely sure but crack on with the bedroom today and I will get painting done <laughs> Morning everyone, it is now Wednesday. Um, unfortunately the builders for the basement got delayed by an extra day so they didn't arrive yesterday to start on the basement so they're coming today. So the time is 7.21 a.m. I'm up bright and early, I've got my tea there. Um, I'm gonna give you a very quick, very small, small, teeny tiny, preview of what the basement currently looks like but as I mentioned in Wednesday's vlog was it Wednesday yeah Wednesday's vlog you will see the full basement like renovation if you will over on a separate video so here is obviously we're in the kitchen which currently is an absolute mess we've got recycling washing and all the stuff over there has been cleared out of the way because they're going to use this back exit rather than trudging up and down the stairs. Um, so we're in the kitchen, the basement is through yonder. So yes, this is the basement, it's quite large. Um, we have some cupboards in here, these we built, all of this we built, it wasn't painted and none of this sort of makeshift ceiling was here, we did all of this. Um, so this is the back half, which currently houses the washing machine and tumble dryer in yonder as you can see it's all absolutely hideous we've got this one i call it prison window because it has to have the grate on it for security uh, and that's our water filter and this was simon's little toolbox which is obviously currently empty and then we have the front half which is through this little doorway which again is just currently filled with crap. So yeah, this is it. It's quite a good space. Um, it's not particularly a very usable space because if I set you guys down over here, then you'll be able to see. All right, so if I move back over here, you'll see the head height. Now this obviously is something that we have made. Simon's like a little bit taller than me. So as you can see, there's really not a lot of space unless we were to excavate and that would cost tens and tens of thousands of pounds and it ain't happening because it's just there's no point if it's not going to add significant value to the house hello bean are you my helper going to help me so i've got bean here helping <laughs> helping and i've got virgin river on netflix 
and this is basically what is going to be getting me through the day because I am about to start polyfillering the I'm trying to find one now are there any the like ah there we go can you see that these little like uh, screw holes on the skirting board and then tomorrow if my little tool arrives I've ordered this tool off Amazon I'm gonna caulk in here mainly in bits like this where you can see there's a big old gap because this is an old house so nothing is straight the walls aren't straight floors aren't straight ceilings aren't straight nothing is straight then I can sand all that and then paint. Right, I have just filled those holes in the skating board, but I completely realised that I forgot to tell you guys about what else we have had going on today and probably will have going on tomorrow. In fact, definitely having going on tomorrow. So last week I spotted this. Ah, there it is. Can you see that? That is every homeowner's worst nightmare. It's a leak. It's a yellowy brownie damp spot so if we go upstairs you will see that the shower has been demolished because this is what was causing the damp spot which fortunately i spotted very very early on so we've had um, another builder in here today just redoing all this section removing all this and trying to figure out what the actual issue was at this room we do actually want to have completely ripped out and reconfigured uh, move everything around because we only had this done on the cheap this was i think the first proper room that we had done and yeah we want to change it so that it's properly done with a little bit more expense in the correct way but for now this is what we've got going on good morning everyone Today is Thursday? Yeah, I've lost track of all time, literally all time. Oh, I also feel rank, I feel disgusting because the shower is out of action, the bath has got loads of stuff in it, so I haven't had like a proper wash in two days and I've been DIYing, so yeah. I smell unsavoury, shall we say. So last night, or yesterday afternoon, I filled holes and just dodgy areas in the skirting board. The skirting board, I should add, isn't actually that old. It's not like the original skirting board. We had the skirting board done when we had all of the floors done, which was approximately three years ago. The skirting board is in pretty good nick. It just needed some holes filling that we never properly filled first time around when it was installed. So I'm waiting to caulk that because I ordered a special little tool. I watched a tutorial online about how to caulk the top of skirting boards. And um, so I ordered this tool online. I'm just waiting for that to arrive with the Amazon man. So that's not going to arrive until later on. So I don't kind of want to just be hanging around doing naffle. So what I'm going to do is do the first coat on the bed because it is still morning time. So I can get the first coat done and potentially even the second coat because it takes four hours in between coats. And then I can put all of the mattress and stuff back on the bed and we can sleep on the bed tonight and then potentially I can do the second coat tomorrow. And then at least the bed will be done, which is, I would say, a relatively big task. So that's my plan of action today. So I am armed with copious amounts of sandpaper because my first job is to sand the bed. And then I'm going to start to paint. I say paint, it's stain. Okay, after about an hour and a half of sanding, I'm pretty satisfied with the job I've done. I've used quite a lot of sandpaper and then just using an old tea towel, I've just kind of dusted it off. Um, I was going to use sugar water, but then I read a few things online saying that you don't really need to use it when you're staining like this. It's better to use sugar water for when you're properly painting. So I've just popped down. I've only got two dust sheets, so this is going to be a bit tricky. And I've also had to basically like fold them, fold them again to make them really thick just in case any stain drips on the floor. 
Um, so what I'm going to have to do is just be a bit mindful of when I get to certain areas. I'm going to need to lift the bed from underneath and then move my dust sheets round as I move. And also just make sure that there's no drips before I move the dust sheet, which there shouldn't be because I've already tested the stain on the back. So now it's time for the exciting bit, the transformational bit, and that is the staining. So after one coat, this is the result. So now I have to wait to let it dry. I think the drying time is four hours before I can do another coat. And this is what I've used. So it's Ron Seal 10 year wood stain, satin in dark oak. And as you can see on the tin, it will dry different colours depending on if it's softwood or hardwood. But I am quite impressed with my first coat. So I'm gonna go get some lunch, let this dry for a few hours and then come back and attempt my second coat because it's just turned 1 p.m. So I reckon after four hours I could do another coat and then, or at least after maybe about three hours I can start coating from where I started from because that will have been four hours. And then, yeah, let it dry before probably bedtime and then I can put all of the stuff back on, all the bedding and mattress, etc. So job well done if I do say so myself. Good morning everyone. It is 8.54 on Friday. I have already given the bed its third lick of, I was gonna say paint, but stain, this stuff. So I'm now waiting for that to dry. As you will probably hear, we've got the bathroom guy back here and he is hopefully finishing a shower today. I feel a little bit better today because I had a, sh a shower, a bath shower last night. So I do feel a little bit fresher, but it'd be nice to have a shower back. Now, while I'm waiting for this to dry, because I am sort of debating whether I want to do one more coat, a fourth coat on the bed, which because it's only like nine o'clock in the morning, I've got loads of time to do. I am going to caulk the skirting boards, like the gap in between the wall and the skirting board. And I'm gonna use this little tool here. Yes, this little bad boy to kind of smooth all the caulking that I do. I've just watched the tutorial on YouTube. I've never done this before, but I'm damn well gonna give it a crack. Oh, DIY. There we go. Right, we're in. And then pump it to get it tight and pushing. Oh, I can see the caulk start to come out. And now, hello, I'm just going to get caulking. <laughs> Is that even the word? Who knows? This is what should make it neat. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Oh yeah. I mean, to be fair, that is not bad for my first caulking experience. That's pretty damn good actually. I'm happy with that. I think I've learned myself an Oreo. Good morning everyone, it is now Saturday and today on the menu of DIY is installing the ceiling rose. Is that what it's called? Ceiling rose? Yeah, it's really light. We've never installed one of these before so I'm going to have a go at doing that today. Obviously Simon's going to help me. I think you do need two people to do this but <laughs> only time will tell. And then, or rather before that point, the light is currently over near the window, but because, oh, that didn't sound good. This is the light fitting, it's obviously quite large, and it dangles, it dangles, it hangs, I think that's the proper word, quite low. So you need to move it. <sighs> need to move it a little bit further back so that it's more central in the room so it's hanging more over the bed. Right, so first things first, we've turned the electric off to this point which was very important 
And now Simon's just told me that if we go in the loft, the wires, because we haven't had the loft done, the wires are like in all the recesses. So once we kind of move, because it's only going to be moved to about here. So once we've kind of drilled the hole and got the location, I can nip up in the loft and then just thread them through. Whereas in my head, I thought I was going to have to drill like a fist size hole. <laughs> stick my arm up in the hole and just feel around for the wires. But this is easy, or easier. <laughs> Haven't distinguished if it's actually easy or not yet. So first things first, I'm gonna remove the old thing, the old light. Top tip, have the tools that you need. <gasps> Don't let go of that before you start the job. Less of it. Because I think I need to keep supporting this Ew. with my hand and my arm's going numb. Right, marked where we want the light going. Probably should be wearing goggles, but I don't have any. So. Step number two involves going up yonder. So I'm gonna scuttle up there and try and find these wires. And I also, because the lamp light thing is quite heavy, need to figure out if there is like a beam either side or where the beam is in relation to the hull. Uh, Cause obviously I'm gonna need more, something to grip on in the ceiling. So off I go. Oh. I'm going that way. Coming back down. Because <laughs> I need to get some gloves. Because it's, what is that? Fiberglass. Nice. Right. This is the loft. <laughs> I'm on phone cam now. And I think I need to get to somewhere over there. I've got a feeling it's under there, which is not good. Uh, yeah. But this is the loft, everybody. First and last time you'll probably ever see this. Right, I am here. But that's where I've come up and I've come all the way in here. <coughs> I've found, excuse me, the wire and I found the hole, which is in there. Can you put the thing back up? Look, <gasps> there's my hole. So now I need to thread the wire through the hole. Right, it's literally just taken me about 15 minutes to get this box open and I started getting really stressed and then Simon just came along and went poop and opened it. I've literally been sat there googling it for like eternity. Um, right, so now the next stage, so I've got that open, is actually I don't even need that for this bit but I need to cut out this section of my ceiling rose because we need to attach the ceiling rose first and then I'm gonna adjust the chain length on here. So I'm gonna need some pliers. Um, and then, yeah, once we've got the ceiling rose up and that's set, then we can attach, we, then I can attach the light. <sighs> I felt like things were going so well, especially after going up in the loft and making the new hull and finding the wire in the loft. I was so proud of myself. And now I've just gone like 10 steps backwards because I feel like I shouldn't have cut out this massive hull because what I've done, and I would just like to say there are not many tutorials that have actually asked the specific question that I want to ask. When you put this through the hole, this sits, because it's obviously raised like that, much deeper than I thought it would. That is my own miscalculation. So it kind of sits like that. So I would have to caulk or fill quite a lot and quite high up the fixture and that would just look really weird. So I think 
I'm going to have to buy a new ceiling rose. I'm going to keep this one because we haven't got um, any ceiling roses anywhere else in the house. And I'm going to keep this because it's a shame to waste it. And also we don't know what other lights we're getting for other rooms in the house. This may well be used. I think this is gonna have to be the end of this vlog. I will pick all of this back up in the next one, but for now, oh, ceiling rose is up. It might not have been the ceiling rose that I wanted originally, but it is very similar. Um, so yeah, that didn't quite go as planned, but basically I got this one from B&Q drilled a hole which is what I think I should have done in the other one just the small hole for the um, wire to come through added the bracket on the top and used super super long screws so that the screws go all the way through into the joist so that it can hold the weight of the super heavy light fitting and then essentially just glued and screwed it onto the ceiling <laughs> It was not an easy task and I feel like YouTube failed me a little bit on this one but nonetheless it's up. I'm going to wait 24 hours for that um, adhesive to go dry, to fully, fully, fully dry and then I'm going to caulk around the edge and hopefully fit the light fitting but that'll all be in the next vlog so I will see you guys then. Thank you very much for watching this part success, part horrendous uh, series of events. And yeah, I will see you on Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Mm, yeah, potentially Wednesday for the next installment. <laughs>